everybody. Welcome to Trader Merlin Show. It is your happy hump day Wednesday edition. Boy, howdy. We have some fun stuff to talk about with regards to the markets. Uh, we were talking about that CPI number and how you want to pay attention to that. I thought, you know what? They set that expectation at 0.2%. My guess is we're going to blow past that. Not only blow past 02 we blew past the previous reading. But no, don't worry, folks. Inflation is completely in check. We'll talk about some of that today. But I want to get to the topic du jour. We're going to talk about uh, what someone out there posted is clickbait. I have to just give a shout out to a new viewer who haven't uh, seen induction performance says clickbait title. Well, in my mind, clickbait is where it's a topic that you draw people in, you don't do a damn thing about it, you dance around it. Oh no, we're not going to just dance around it. We're getting on that boat. We're going to talk about the arc. Is it a sinking ship at this point? It's been the darling of the financial markets for quite some time, but now all of a sudden, Catherine what's fun <laughs> looking a little titanic-esque well i could look at things from the technical perspective there's always the fundamental sides which i think is really what's telling you how the ship is afloat or not afloat You're here to help me break down all of the fundamental side of things we've got colin tedders from the investor channel on youtube colin good to have you with us my friend how you been Merlin, I've been very good. Thanks so much for having me on the show. It's one of my most favorite shows. Love all the guests that you have on the program. It's an honor to be one of them. Thank you so much. Hey, my privilege. Anybody with your expertise and what you do, you give so much information out there for free. Guys, if you have not checked it out, check out the Investor Channel. Um, and if it's if he hasn't covered a, t uh, a ticker that you want to see, you can always send him a message, and he's usually pretty good about covering those ones. Before we dive into ARC and not do a clickbait show, but I definitely want to talk about ARC and make sure that we <laughs> uh, explain what's going on there. What's your take on what's going on in the market? We saw some pretty big drops out there today. Thought I'd get your quick two cents on it. Yeah, so I'll tell you what, Merlin. It, I've, I've been following the markets for 20 years now or so, and this is probably as confused as I've been. And the mixed messaging that we're seeing is having buy and hold investors like me think about going into hibernation right. for a little while, okay? So you got Janet Yellen saying a week or so ago, she's the treasury secretary, not the Federal Reserve president anymore. She's talking about raising rates, okay? Which is fine, That you know, look, that, there's certainly an argument for that. But then we had a jobs report come out, I think it was Monday, mm -hmm. that was a complete disaster. And that basically flies in the face of raising rates if the Fed's job is to, keep full employment, the jobs rate just basically showed that they can't do that. But then we get this inflation report today that is showing massive inflation. And look, these reports are controlled by the government. So they might be even worse than what we're seeing. And we're seeing lumber prices, copper prices, uh, obviously home prices, equity prices, mm -hmm. Bitcoin prices. Everything is just going up and up and up. And so that obviously leads to higher interest rates, okay? Higher interest rates, as we've seen, not necessarily that great for stocks. And then obviously you have a new president who wants to increase spending. He wants to do his thing, right? Okay, so he wants to increase spending, just not good for inflation. <laughs> but how does he want to pay for it? He wants to raise taxes yeah, yeah, on yeah. individuals and corporates. So you've got like a triple whammy, inflation, interest rates, rising taxes. These are all very, very bad things for the stock market, especially yes. speculative stocks. And so me, again, as a buy and hold investor, not great. But look, for the viewers of your program, for you personally, I tell you what, I'd be clearing off my calendar for the next several months yeah. because – Every day is probably going to be a, like a popcorn type day where you're going to have lots of trades setting up. Tremendous a lot, tremendous volatility. Which, of course, as someone who's an active trader, I love it. So I'm, I'm embracing the volatility. You know, I wish I had the, I wish I had the same short position I had back in in April of last year, which was colossal. I, I have a small short position, but nothing compared to what I had before. Um, so we've got a lot of negative pressure out there. And before we dive into a full analysis of this picture right here, which is that sinking ship that called Ark. Now I have a question mark and an exclamation point after sinking ship because let's be honest with the names that are in that E. ETF, it's not going to sink totally, but it's definitely hitting some hard times. And I'll bring up the chart for everybody out at home. Here is ARKK. Now, this is the darling uh, ETF in the financial markets right now. This is Catherine Woods' ARK Fund. Just to put in perspective, what are some of the big names that she's holding? Tesla, Roku, Square, Shopify, Zoom, Zillow. Uh, she even put some Coinbase in there recently. you got DocuSign. You've got Plantera Electronics. I mean, uh, DraftKings, which is a weird one. Baidu, Twitter, Tencent. I mean, there's a lot of huge, huge names in that space. But a lot of them have been... Uh, we'll just say on a, on a decline at this point for, for quite some time. You guys can see from the peak here, 
in on the second, uh, sorry, 16th of February, it fell 37%, 33% in 17 days. Right now we're down 36% on this fund. So Colin, what is it about this fund or is there something about this fund that leads you to believe that this boat might be sinking or maybe even start to stay afloat now? Yeah, so you know the the composition of it is somewhat different than your. I mean, first of all, it's actively managed, which is somewhat unique in, in the stock market. A lot of stuff is like index based, but obviously they have ten percent or more, slightly more of their holdings in Tesla, which you know I don't need to describe to anybody watching this show is one of the most extraordinarily volatile stocks. Now it has been going up. The longer term trend is up and up and up. But you have periods of time where Tesla can swing. I think it's down 30% from the high, something like that. The second largest holding is Teladoc Health, mm -hmm. which obviously last year was a, a phenomenal investment, performed phenomenally. But in, in my opinion, that, that could have been its best year of all time. And not only on top of that, it completed an acquisition of Livongo Health during last year as well. So it basically acquired another company at what many consider the top of the market as well. Then you've got companies like Roku, Square, and Shopify. I actually like these companies, yeah. okay? These companies are looking like they're turning a profit. Are they overvalued? Okay, I think almost any, even if you're bullish those companies, you can look at the valuation and say, well, yeah, maybe those, those are overvalued as well. You've got Zoom Video in there also, epic run last year. Did it pull forward five, six years of gains in right. one year? Maybe like Teladoc. You got Zillow in there, certainly a real estate play. Uh, I got nothing wrong with that. But then you've got Spotify as well, which is like a streaming music app. And I pulled up their financials. Their financials are starting to go flat, okay? And the way they're increasing their profit is by essentially cutting cost. And so sure. I don't typically like companies that they're not really growing on that top line anymore, and the way they're growing is by cutting cost. On top of that, Apple's a competitor, you've got numerous other competitors, Amazon, YouTube, things like that. Then they've got their newest edition, Coinbase, Mm -hmm. which I love from a fundamental perspective. I've, we've only been able to see kind of bits and pieces of their numbers in their S1 or the kind of their initial filing. I think in June, next month, I think we get a full full view. And look, the, the fundamentals look phenomenal on that. But my thought with Coinbase is, would I rather own Bitcoin? Would I rather own Ethereum? Or would I rather own Coinbase? Okay, almost like a derivative. Coinbase is almost a derivative of Bitcoin crypto, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think you've got viewers, and there's many viewers out there that are savvy enough to probably just go into crypto rather than invest in what is essentially kind of a derivative service of that. And they've got a lot of other stocks in here, but the vast majority of them are like Tesla, Teladoc, and uh, Shopify to a certain degree where there are profitable, maybe to a minor degree, but the valuations have just gotten stretched since we've had such an epic run in this market since really last, since last March. And so how much more performance can she do? And here's the deal, okay? I know a lot of people, I, I hear it on my channel, I've put up videos about Kathy Wood, they tend to be very well viewed and, and commented on, and people, the argument always is, is look, Kathy Wood is a, a f looking five years out, five, mm -hmm. you know, her, her time, and look, I respect that, I believe that, but her job is no different than a hedge fund manager who has lockup, who typically has investors put their money in, and then he locks them in, he or she locks them in four, three, four, five years before they're able to take that money out. Kathy Wood doesn't have that luxury, okay? So she is actually at the mercy of inflows and outflows right. into her fund. And if you look at a one-year kind of inflow to her fund, there is almost no outflow, almost no outflow. And why would you? It's been a great performing ETF. It's outperformed the S&P 500. But over the last month, you've actually seen net outflows in the fund. And if that continues, <laughs> I don't need to tell anybody here, that's a problem, yeah. okay? It, you can't look five years out if people are pulling money out of your fund. And I've got the stats up here just over the last six months, the S&P 500 total return is 17% and RK is 4.9%. Look, I, I'm not gonna sit here and complain about 4.9% return, but if just the broader market is returning 17%, 
Yeah. What what are we paying a management fee for? Yeah. Why don't we go get one of these you know index funds through Schwab or Fidelity or whoever that pays almost no, you know no no management fee? Why don't I just do that and earn seventeen percent? Yeah. So she has a problem if the outflows continue, the the underperformance continues, and we talked about this at the top of the show. There's a lot of macro stuff that is out of her hand. Look, it's out of her hands what happens to interest rates, inflation, higher taxes, increased spending, things right. of that nature. So a tough position. Look, this is why there's not a lot of actively managed ETFs out there because it's actually, it's great when things are going great. You're on right. CNBC, you're, you're, fam you're quote unquote famous, but when things start going bad, yeah. it's, a, it's a brutal, brutal job, especially because you don't have a lockup. You can't lock these people into your fund and require them to hold for the five-year time horizon that you may or may not have. You know, I don't you, know if I answered your question. You did. Right. You did. So, you actually, you, not only did you answer my question, but you brought in like 100 other ones. So I'm trying to, to filter through the questions that come. Right. Um, you know, with the, with the title of the show was, you know, Arc, a sinking ship. And, and I think it, it begs a question of, where it's obviously headed down. There's no argument that for the past four months, you've seen aggressive sell-off in this. We're seeing uh, start to see some net outflows. We're also seeing equity markets start to roll over with inflationary data, which means this whole arc could sink a lot further, but it's not gonna completely go to zero. That, that's obvious. Um, yeah. Where it will go back down to is a point maybe where it deserves to be, which would be somewhere along the lines of its, if its historic trend. Now you said something rather interesting. You said, you know, when she's buying, she's basically going for the five-year plan. And you know, did did some of her chickens come home to roost too early because of what happened with the pandemic? And and I 100% agree with you. I think I, I look at her portfolio. I see nothing wrong with it other than Zoom. Everything else in there, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. Some I really like. Others I'd be like, well, maybe not the heaviest position in my portfolio. But some of these, like Zoom, like Teladoc, like Plantair, I mean, they went parabolic starting from February. So all of a sudden, she looks like the most amazing person on earth and really was, you were at the right place at exactly the right time. Now, for me, if I look at this chart here, this is the chart of ARC. You know, you'll notice that back in 2015, 16, you know, it, it was floundering sideways, started a nice little uptrend, went sideways again from about uh, middle of 2018 to 2020. And then once the pandemic hit, I'll, I'll just put the numbers from bottom the, the pandemic roughly to the peak there. In a period of 11 months, it went up 373%. Holy cow, right? That, that's a bit overdone by anybody's calculations of a normal market. So for me, it's a question of, you know, where does this come back down to? And the basic thing I would do is just draw something very rough. I know this is an extremely rough trend line, but you know, do, do I see uh, Arc getting back down to somewhere around sixty bucks? That's wow. where, that. I, it seems like a long way. If it's at one hundred two right now, sixty bucks. If it got to sixty, I'll tell you what. I'm buying Arc at sixty bucks for sure, um, and only because the the portfolio that she has. I think at that point become uh, more decently valued. I think a lot of them are overvalued, but you have a greater pulse on the fundamentals of these guys than I do because I don't care for fundamentals really. Um, you mentioned a couple names. Let's talk about some of these bigger names in the portfolio like Teladoc and, and what, what have you noticed with the, uh, the earnings or the fundamentals that may cause you to worry? Okay, so with Teladoc, the concern I have, number one, is they made an acquisition last year of Livongo, and when I post videos about Teladoc being down and they're losing money, people always bring up, well, they bought Livongo. Well, yeah, they bought Livongo at, the, it's like buying a house in 2007. It's like buying a Lamborghini right off the lot. You overpaid, mm -hmm. okay, because <laughs> now, now Teladoc is down, I think it's like 45, 50% from the highs. So obviously they have overbought on Lavongo, and Lavongo wasn't making money. It's not like they acquired some company that was printing money and had you know net income or whatever. No, they were losing money too. Okay, and so when you look at the Teladoc Health, what what I'm seeing is they are their their loss from operations increased fourfold. So they lost 21 million dollars in last quarter in 2020, and this quarter they lost 84 million dollars. Okay, that cannot just be explained by oh yeah, they bought a, a company and they lost four times more money. No, it's showing me, number one, that yes, revenues did increase, they more than doubled, but look, with, with the valuation that this stock is at, they better be growing you know, revenues by more than double. Look, we just saw Facebook print, I think it was like 35, 36% growth. I mean, that's Facebook. We yeah. saw Google grow at a similar clip. Apple grew, Apple's been around for, like three decades, okay, <laughs> and they're growing at, uh, and, you know, so 
you know, the market has to, you know, ask these questions. Is it worth taking the risk on these companies that might have just had the best year of all time? You know, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. will they become Michael Jordan? That's the analogy sometimes I use is will this company become the Michael Jordan of the telehealth business? Or will there just be a lot of other players in there, like a Zoom video, like other proprietary technologies that are out there? Walmart just made an acquisition of, I can't remember the company off the top of my head, but they made an acquisition in this space. Look, we're using Skype right now, okay? Like, face-to-face -face communication on video is not, it's not an iPhone, okay? It's it's not like a Facebook that, that has some advantages over having an economy of scale. This is... This is a tough business, okay? There's not, I don't think there's gonna be a gold medal winning stock in this business, like we see with an iPhone or a social media stock or a search right. engine. There's gonna be a bunch of silver medal winners. Mm -hmm. And that to me is never that great of investment. When you're, when you're fighting for silver, you're fighting for bronze, like how many of those stocks like win year after year after year? And right. I, I, of course, I'm looking for long-term perspective for five, more than five years, really. For me, it's like 10 years, 15 years. This is how long I'm looking out. Certainly, you could come in here and trade Teladoc. You could trade some of these stocks, and maybe that's what Kathy Wood wants to do. I don't know. Yeah. But from a fundamental perspective, this Teladoc, in my opinion, doesn't look good. It is not turning the corner in terms of profits, like we see with a Roku, a Square, and some of these other investments that they have. They have turned the corner, and they are turning profitable. Teladoc being the second highest weighting, right behind Tesla, a little concerning in my opinion, just because they are not in a position like, look, Tesla's got such a big lead in, in EVs that it's you can't even see the next competitor behind them, whereas Teladoc, I, I don't know. I, I think there's uh, plenty of other competitors in there, so I'm a little concerned. Mm -hmm. I'd be a little concerned about that investment. For it sure. it seems to me also like with Teladoc, like the barrier to entry might actually be um, not as intrusive as it is with Tesla, because Tesla like. Do you need to make a car? I mean, there are so many steps that process that they have, like you say, they have a huge head start. Now the competition is definitely racing to get there, but boy, they have a long way to go and barriers to entry. With Teladoc, it's like, man, if I'm Kaiser Permanente or uh, I don't know, what are some of the other major hospitals, I could right. implement something like this rather quickly with the right technology, and, and yeah, I could compete with them. You know, you look at that chart of Teladoc, I, I'm more of a technical guy, so I look at this and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, ugly. I mean, that peak we yeah. saw in 2021, we're down 54% in 12 weeks and it doesn't show any signs of letting up. I'm looking at for any area of demand where I might be interested in buying and I just don't see one on Teladoc. So, you know, you're right, being 6% of the ARC fund, this is a pretty bad thing, uh, in my opinion, to have, like you say, so many unknowns, so much potential for competition to take over and replace this one. Um, it certainly isn't the Tesla. Now, let, let, because Tesla's on there, I know you've done a ton of videos on Tesla because it's yeah. the darling. Um, I hate to say it. I know you guys are all going to hate me. I like this is one of my favorite positions. It looks actually one of the strongest looking positions in her portfolio right now, even though it's down 34% last 15 weeks. What's your take on Tesla? Uh, Tesla, I mean, I, I love what Tesla's got going on, obviously. I mean, uh, uh, you know, competition-wise, they're way out in front. I think what a lot of people don't necessarily talk about is their supercharger network does give them a huge competitive advantage, not only over other electric vehicle makers, but hydrogen vehicles, things like that, where it's damn near impossible to find a place to fill those things up, okay? I, I've driven enough in a Tesla to know that it's tough to charge these things, you know <laughs> what I mean? And imagine if I had a, a Mercedes or a Lexus one or, or whoever, like where am I gonna charge that, okay? And I know Tesla, their plan is maybe to kind of vertically integrate that charging station, allow you to charge your you know, Ford or whatever it is from there, and that could cr increase revenue. So I like their competitive advantage, I like their cars, obviously I think that's kind of irrelevant. From a fundamental perspective, they are not burning through cash like they once were. Okay, they had to raise money. They were raising money last year. I think they raised money twice last year at, at four or five billion dollars. Doesn't look like you, that needs to happen anymore. So that is a positive. And on top of that, the wild card is you got Elon Musk, yeah. one of the most famous, uh, I mean, not just CEOs, one of the most famous people in the world. That 
is a big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can't necessarily price that in. But I know that's not fundamentals. It's not charts, but it's an that intangible. You can't. In a little bit. Yeah, you can't. You can't take that out of the equation. You know, it's it's kind of like uh, you know Trump. I mean, he, you look at his influence and, and what what he can say and, and convince people to do or get people to act on his words. Same thing with Elon Musk. I mean, God, I anybody watched the Saturday Night Live thing this weekend? I, I loved it. I thought he did a brilliant job. But I love when he basically says that Dogecoin. He goes, "Yeah, it's a what do you saw? Oh, There's the right word for it. It's a it's not a, a hustle, scam. I think he said it's a hustle. It. Right, it's a hustle. I, I love that he <laughs> if he does that, or he's just you know smoking weed with Joe Rogan. But bottom line is, if he says, "Hey, you know what? Teladoc is going to be the greatest company in five years. That stock's going to jump fifty percent in the next oh, twenty four yeah. hours. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, it's funny because I actually do watch Elon Musk's Twitter feed. I'm not a big Twitter fan. I really don't like it. But I actually watch his Twitter feed, and you're kind of waiting to see if he mentions something you'll see it pop right away um, you know buy the rumor sell the news or buy his tweet it seems to be the way it goes yes absolutely yeah especially with dogecoin sell sell the sell the news on that but buy that rumor because uh it, that has proven itself over the last few months for sure definitely um all right one of my favorites in there is in in the arc fund is square i have actually been selling yeah. puts on square because i'm wanting to okay. buy it i'm um, waiting for a little bit lower so we, we we could talk about square but i'm curious to get your take on coinbase i saw somebody earlier post in chat and let me go scroll through because i like to get people in here uh especially the guy that says that my show is one of the, what did you say gregory says this channel has always been the bottom of the stairwell low energy analysis thanks greg that's awesome good to have you with us <laughs> feel, feel free to jump ship and go to another channel if you don't like what we talk about that's cool um um, where is the question? Oh, Coinbase. Uh, Gregory says, same guy. Coinbase is rat poison weaponized. And I, it's funny because you said you loved it because the fundamentals. I'm not looking at fundamentals and I actually don't like Coinbase. So let, let's get a discussion on, on Coinbase fundamentals okay. versus technicals. Okay. So I have, I don't have their full year numbers up, but I've seen for their three months, they're projecting net income between 730 million and 800 million and that's up just massively over where they were a year ago mm -hmm. and then when you look and that's net income okay that's factoring in all their expenses this is factoring in a lot of gap rules that make them factor in stock-based compensation depreciation all that stuff that's phenomenal yeah. for a, you know so this company reminds me a little bit of just from a financial perspective of like a Facebook, a Google, a Microsoft, where they have these incredibly rich margins, just huge gross margins, where they print a ton of money to the top line and a ton of that flows to the bottom line. Just me as a long-term investor, just the kind of stocks that I like, that is check mark number one. I need high revenues and I need those revenues to flow down to the bottom line because it gives you a lot of leeway. Okay, a lot of bad stuff can happen to your company if you're printing a ton of money down to that net income side. And this company is printing, it is going to likely print over a billion dollars in a quarter to that bottom line. And I'm looking at the valuation right now, I've got it at $58 billion. Whew. So on here, I'm seeing a forward P, I don't know if this is right, a forward P of 46. And look, if you're a value investor, if you're looking at Bank of America or some of these other stocks, that seems out, just outrageous. Mm -hmm. But 46 P, forward PE on a company that's growing their top line by just ridiculously quick margin, you know, they're not only growing, but they're growing profitably. That's a winning combination. Now, mm -hmm. from a, a technical perspective, I think it's probably a different story. Number one, they just went public. It was a direct listing. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, a direct listing allows insiders no lockup. So they right, can we can sell right sell, away. Yep, sell right away. And so, do I want to jump in there when these guys look? Guys and girls have every right to sell their shares and go buy a house, a boat, a car. I don't care. Buy whatever you want. They have every right to do that. Do I, but do I want to come in there and buy their shares? Probably not. I'd wait for, personally me, I thought about buying this and it was one I thought pretty deeply about, but I said, you know what, I'm just gonna wait. I'm wait for the price, you know, one is just following your show and looking at supply and demand <laughs> levels on a chart and saying, I don't know where this thing, you know, yeah. we've, we've got five, you know, 10 days of price action on this thing. Do I really want to jump in there? Like I, I, I know where, where this is heading, where the buyers are, where the sellers are. I, I, I don't know. And so, but I will say 
when we when we get the uh, more clarity on that it is a stock that i, I could certainly mm -hmm. see buying um but I, again i'd have to weigh it mm -hmm. i'd rather just go buy more bitcoin ethereum yeah. whatever other crypto that that floats your boat that um, day i'm with you on that one we'll, we'll both we'll both applaud to that one i'm curious with regards to coinbase um you know you really only have all they've given us is 2019 and 2020 you know, for me, from a technical analysis perspective, I need to see a little bit more of the picture before I start making decisions. That's why I tell everybody, stay away from IPOs. You know, I think we nailed what it was gonna happen with this IPO in particular. There were so many people asking me, hey, I wanna buy it, I wanna buy it. I said, look, you're buying into the hype. What'll happen, it's gonna go way above where it should be. It'll run up a little bit and then it'll crash for the next 30 days or so, maybe 60 or 90 days, depending on what the lockup periods are as people start to sell. But after that point in time, I now have some history to go with. From your perspective as somebody who really dives into the fundamental weeds here, is is having the history for just two years enough for you to make a, a play fundamentally? Because yes, you're seeing them grow quickly, right? It's It went from, uh, I think I had the numbers up here on my screen earlier. Uh, let me bring them up just real quick. Um, you know, you're looking at total revenue in 2019 was 530, 533 million, and then we went to 1.2 billion. Well. That, that looks amazing, but it's yeah. only two-point data, so I'm a little concerned right. that you just don't have all the numbers in place yet to make an effective decision on the company as an investment. Right, and, and so certainly in that case, my sizing, if I were to buy Coinbase, I mean, we're talking about a minuscule amount of a portfolio. So in a $10,000 portfolio, it's a $280 stock two shares, three shares, okay. that type of thing, okay? So that's first what, but the, the question I always ask is can Col can Coinbase win a gold medal in this sector, okay? Can it beat, Square has a product that's similar, mm -hmm. PayPal has an offering. What happens when JP Morgan and Bank of America decide to do something here? What happens when, shoot, Facebook and Google and Apple could decide to do something here too? So. As time goes on, I, I, I'll have to weigh that. I, I think right now, in a vacuum, yeah, they're the clear leader. I think you've got Binance and there's a couple other mm -hmm. ones that are big, okay, and, and kind of mainstream where people are doing a lot of their buying and selling. It's certainly right. It's probably in the United States as well. It's certainly like the Facebook of social media sites. It's, yeah. it's literally the best. It's the Google of search engine. It's the best. For now, I'd have to, <laughs> for now exactly, and so I, I'd 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 want to see some more time go by on that too. Do, you know what is its competitive advantage? Okay, what stops me from just opening up some other account and transferring my Bitcoin from Coinbase over to somebody else? Um, so you know we have to think about that. There's a lot of risk around. Uh, hacking for a better, you know, no other way to put it. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of risk with this company. Okay, as we as we've seen with like a pipe, a pipeline got hacked this last week. Okay, <laughs> That's crazy. So you better believe. I watch I watch fist fights at a gas pump in North Carolina today. I mean, these guys are like they're brawling over gas. It's like, wow, is this? I think oh. I saw this movie with Mel Gibson. You know, Mad Max. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So. That has me a little concerned as well, as with any, you know, with any company, but with something like the, with crypto, that is very, it's very difficult. Once the crypto is gone, it's it's gone. It's yeah. not like my Bank of America balance where it could be quote unquote gone, and Bank of America could, could it's insured potentially reverse this. Right. Yeah, it's insured as well. So you know, I, I there's a lot of questions there. There's a lot of positives. Um, but I, I, kind of, I don't necessarily have a hard rule, but I, I, I tend to shy away from recently public companies, wait for the stock to find a level, wait for a little bit more clarity on competition and, and how the market kind of wants to judge and value an asset like that. And look, there's no, there's no problem with being late, okay? I got into Amazon, I don't know, four or five, six years ago, and I mean, I've done great in it, okay? Yeah. Same with Tesla and Apple. I wasn't early with any of these stocks, okay? So you can you don't have to be early. There's no prize, there's no trophy for being early. Can you make a little bit more money? Sure, but look at Bitcoin. You could have gotten Bitcoin this time last year and you, you'd be very, very, very wealthy. Dogecoin, anything, there, you don't have to be early. 
Um, and I think a lot of newer investors make that mistake. They, they, it's almost like they they just have pride in owning it at, before everybody else. And, and, and certainly you can benefit from that. But me personally, I, I like to wait for a little bit more more clarity sure. in this one. But I love it. I love what I see. The fundamentals are fantastic. Probably some of the best I've seen from an early stage company. Can they keep it up? What's competition going to be? Those are those are pretty big questions, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I think at this point we're dealing with a transition in the marketplace. We'll have to wait and see what the next couple months bring. But when we look at the, the trajectory of a lot of different market instruments right now, uh, it's looking pretty weak. And of course, today's topic was talking about the ARC fund. Um, is there, do you look at the, I know you like to break down individual companies. Do you look at that ARC fund itself from any kind of fundamental perspective or is it just kind of breaking apart the components and saying, do I want to buy into this ETF? Well, I think, yeah, you can kind of, I think you can look at it from like a net asset value, um, but I, I, I have a feeling, I've looked at that and it, it, it trades, pretty, since it's so widely held and so widely understood that it, it trades pretty close to its net asset value. Now, what I would just ask myself if I'm an investor, every investor has weaknesses, okay? And, and me personally, my weakness might be healthcare uh, and, and probably maybe energy stocks and things like that. So in those cases, I like to get a little help. I like to invest in ETFs. I like them to do all the work for me, buying and selling, picking what, what they're deciding. Because that those are my that's my weakness. Okay. I don't understand those stocks. When I look at ARC's portfolio, I understand these stocks, mm -hmm. okay? From whether it's businesses that I've been in, whether it's for whatever reason, I'm out here on the West Coast, pretty close to San Francisco, actually pretty close to most of these companies. I understand these companies. I understand their businesses. I understand their competition. Do I need to allow Kathy Wood or, or an active manager to make these decisions for me when I could say, well, I like Tesla, I like Roku, I like Square, I like Shopify a little bit, I like Coinbase. Mm -hmm. Sure. Why the heck do I need Teladoc? Why do I need her dumping stuff? Like she's been dumping stocks like Apple and Google and Amazon in favor of buying more speculative stocks than I personally would would buy. And so I think an investor has to ask themselves that question. Yes, Arc is has had incredible performance, but look. It hasn't been hard to have incredible performance over the last, really, the last <laughs> decade. Okay, you really that, and I always have to take a step back as an investor. I look at my portfolio, my performance. It's really, really good, and I always have to take a step back and be like, well, it really wasn't that hard. Okay, you look <laughs> with no interest rates and you know Fed pumping money into the system. Look, it hasn't been hard. Okay, and so I, I wonder if. I need the assistance in this sector. But look, if you're out there and you don't know a darn thing about technology, you don't know anything about cryptocurrency, you don't know Shopify's advantage over a big commerce or any of their other competitors, if you don't understand how Zillow is transforming the real estate business, you know, look, this this is probably a great way to get exposure to these stocks, okay? And so I think you have to ask yourself that question as an sure. investor. Do you need this help? Do you need somebody making these decisions for you? Chances are, if you're watching a show like this, I would consider you a sophisticated investor. You can probably make a lot of these decisions on your own. And I would encourage people to find their specialty, whether it's tech, whether it's energy, whether it's healthcare, or whatever it is, Focus on that and then get the help, get the assistance, invest in ETFs that you need this exposure to. That's That would be my kind of advice on that. I don't know if I answered your question, but. You, know. you did, you did. Uh, you know, it's 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 just one of those things where you're, you're right. We all have different approaches and different things we're looking for. I like, uh, actually, I love what you said there about you know your weaknesses are this, this, and this. So I'll let somebody else do the heavy work. Where there's other areas where you're like, I know this stuff. This is my bread and butter. And, and that's, I think, the key here. Every one of our yeah. viewers, both yours and mine, will look at their, if they're smart, they'll look at their trading or investing and saying, you know what, I just don't get this sector, or I don't understand how this works, or I really understand how this works, and that's where they focus most of their time. So, um, nice, great approach. Is there a price on ARC that you would buy, be a buyer at? Now, just to, um, because I got the chart up, I figure why not just put you on the spot there. <laughs> I, well, I think you said 60. That 60's deep, be, 60's deep. <laughs> 60's deep, yes. Oh yeah, well I see. Yeah, I consolidated sideways there for a long time in that forty to fifty dollar range. 
And so, boy, that would be a long, I mean, that's 50% down from where we're at. Um, I, I tell you what, may, maybe you start nibbling at, at those levels, but here's the deal. How much outflow would she have from the fund? If this thing tanks 40, 50%, let's say the Dow does okay, some energy stuff does okay, and, and you don't, you get more of like the high flying tech gets driven out, but blue chips don't necessarily go down. You're gonna have a ton of outflow in this. Right. And so how much leverage is she gonna have at that point? How much is her reputation going to be impacted? You know, it's like the New York media. The New York media loves to build people up, like athletes and politicians, and then you make one mistake or you don't deliver and they will just absolutely tear you down. Yep. And so I, I'm a little concerned that she has reached superstar status and that the in vogue thing to do at some point, if she continues to struggle, will be, for lack of a better term, tear her down a little bit, mm -hmm. tear her down for a performance. Not that it's her fault or anything yeah. like that, but I'd be a little concerned about that, that it it's, has such a glowing reputation now, you lose that shine and it's a problem. We've seen it all the time in the stock market, okay? You know, all the time, there's been stocks that have been red hot, and the minute they lose their shine, it's darn near impossible to, to get that momentum back. It, it's a very, very, we're, we're very, very small group of stocks perform like an Amazon or a Tesla or, you know, and even those stocks have had periods of time where, where, where investors have kind of fallen out of favor in it. Right. But it's very, very, very difficult. But I, just from an amateur chart perspective, Boy, it consolidated for two, three years at that $50 level. Tell you what, you pull back to there and buyers have to be, have, would have to be there yeah. at that level. You Not know, I, saying that's where it's going. No, I mean, it, everybody's I got an opinion. You know, here's, a, here's a, I'll throw a hypothesis out to everybody, which would be kind of interesting. We all know what a short squeeze is, right? Where it's so heavily shorted, they just start buying, it pops it up, it, it forces those guys to cover their short positions and it shoots up crazily. I almost envision the opposite thing happening with this ARC fund. And I'll bring up the chart here again so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Notice that the volume spikes, um, the down moves are usually the, the biggest ones, right? That's where the fear is. If the outflows continue, what will happen is she's going to be forced to liquidate her positions, which could cause this thing to fall even faster. And you might get the exact opposite of a short squeeze. It's almost like a margin call sell where all of a sudden this thing falls very quickly. And I would say that if you get a, a real sharp decline in ARC, followed with an, a climactic amount of volume, that may present a buying opportunity as it's probably overdone selling. So I would keep an eye on that one um, just from a maybe a, a, a technical trigger that may give you a clue that this thing could be oversold. Because in the long haul, I agree that this is probably gonna be a, a good fund going forward. There's some great companies in there, but they might've gotten ahead of themselves over the past year. Yeah, and you look, her trades are so well documented. I mean, I'm on Seeking Alpha a lot, and they they and she emails out her trades every every day via email. And look, if she has to start liquidating, it's like, oh, look, she had to sell Tesla, she had to sell Teladoc, she had to sell this. Well, all of a sudden, now that goes on the PR newswire, yep. yep. and that makes people even more uneasy. Like, oh my gosh, this was the stock she believed in for five years, and now she's having to liquidate it. That's why. You know, she's at the mercy of inflow and outflow and performance, okay? And this is why it's so difficult to be an actively managed ETF versus a hedge fund, which can say, hey, if you're going to give me $10 million right now, you have to leave it with me for 10 years. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to lock you up for X, Y, you know, a certain period of time. I mean, that's why the hedge fund guys do it because. Yeah. They know that bad things can happen, and they know once you start pulling your money out, it just wreck the whole fund. Exactly. So, you know, we're in, and that's why we kind of led the show off with a little bit of kind of macro stuff because this macro stuff could just obliterate, obliterate the stock market. I yep. mean, just obliterate it, and certainly high flying stocks will get just absolutely crushed if you have Apple, Amazon, Microsoft. If those stocks take 20 30 percent haircuts I mean everything else is just gonna go go in the tank because you know why if those stocks are going down there's no good reason that kind of the high flying unprofitable or marginally profitable company is going to hang in there it just doesn't it wouldn't make any sense anyway. <laughs> yeah absolutely all right uh, I got one question that completely unrelated to anything we talked about today good you're good. a collector of sports member what's your favorite collectible that you own 
Oh, favorite collectible I own. Oh, I have Tiger Woods. So I you I, I, own I, Tiger Woods, or you have like, have a, <laughs> a I wish card? I owned Tiger Woods. <laughs> Even today, I wish Tiger Woods is my neighbor, obviously. But um, no, I went to a golf tournament, and he was there. And this was twenty years ago now. Um, and I had a ticket. He signed it. So personally, for me, that is just an extraordinarily special piece. I've, I've acquired some other things of him, uh, assigned things of him. Uh, yeah. So Tiger Woods for me is just a hero of mine uh, and and something that I share. That's something I, I buy and sell a lot of sports memorabilia, yeah. things like that. That is something that goes on the wall and won't absolutely ever be moved. You know, maybe my kids will decide to sell it, but uh, just personally, a lot of just a lot of sentimental value behind that. Nice. And uh, just a, a wonderful piece of memorabilia, at least that I that I have. Cool. Just just curious. I just I know you're a big sports yeah. collector guy, so yeah, yeah. Um, all right, Colin. Well, hey, thank you so much. Uh, with regards to your channel, for those that don't know, you should know by now. We we've talked about his channel many times. It's the Investor Channel on YouTube. So I've got it up here. If you just go to uh, YouTube, type in the Investor Channel, you'll see his page there, and it's it's breakdowns of tons of great fundamentals. It sprinkles on technicals as well. So some great information for you. Is do you have like a regular release schedule, or is it kind of when you feel like doing them? So, uh, you know what? I have a Friday show. I have a Friday show where I talk about all the FANG stocks plus Microsoft and Tesla. So we'll talk nice. about all the news during the week, and then we'll go over kind of technical price action and things like that. Cool. So we'll talk about that. And then I've introduced a Saturday show, which is really more like broader broader kind of macro stuff, a little bit of crypto, a little bit of uh, not politics where I'm, I'm picking a side or whatever, but talking about what's going on in Washington and how that might impact stocks as well. So I've got a regular Friday and a regular Saturday. Saturday show, and then anytime we have earnings. So the last few weeks, it's been busy. You've been busy. <laughs> few weeks. Yeah, it's been really busy. Um, and then there's a lull, you know, in about about a month. There's not a lot of earnings. So, you know, I'll, I'll try to figure out a video to put up. But I love doing earnings, looking at the numbers. That is how I analyze these these companies and then and then mix in a little bit of chart stuff to, to understand where, hey, is this a good time to buy and, and whatnot. Awesome. Well, hey, Matt, thank you so much for coming on. I, I know it's been quite some time. I'm glad you're doing well. Good to see your, your show doing well as, uh, as well. So uh, thanks for coming on, man. I look forward to having you back on here soon. Thank you, Merlin. Really appreciate it. Love your show. Thank you so much for having me on. My pleasure, man. Take care. Guys, I was Colin Tedders, The Investor Channel. You want to know more information, just go to YouTube, type in The Investor Channel, check it out. Our discussion today was ARK sinking ship. Now, of course, this, some people are saying clickbait. I wouldn't call it clickbait. I think there's a lot of arguments here as to why ARK fund may continue. Oh, somebody fired it. Somebody's roasting them down the street here in my neighborhood. Um, that there are some arguments that this, this stock could potentially go lower. It looks really ugly right now. And well, for whatever reason, it seems like it's falling out of favor. I think it has a lot to do with the main components of that portfolio all got way ahead of themselves. I mean, you look at the the one that just blows my mind is Zoom. I mean, you talk about being the right place, the right time. Zoom, Zoom was down uh, before the pandemic hit. It was kind of traveling sideways around the sixty dollar range and rallied all the way up to. 588 bucks and just like Sam Evans talks about I as well am very bearish on this one going forward because of competition but the list goes on and on we looked at TDOC right this is the second biggest holding in the ARC fund down 54 uh, percent we didn't even look at Plantair PLTR you know, here's another one that's been struggling recently hit a high of 45 currently at 18 so a lot of this stuff is really starting to show weakness um, and that may continue you know if you Plantair was kind of an IPO so that's a harder one to work with. How about Skill? This is another one in the ARC fund. Oops. Uh, oh, maybe I, I got that one wrong. Uh, Roku. R-O-K-U. Now, Roku is actually holding okay, but it's at a point right now where it breaks down below 300 and closes below. You know, where do you see it drop to? Right away to 225. Looks like the spot to me. But again, big run up due to COVID and here we are giving back some of that. So um, it was nice to have him on the program talking about the sinking ship that is potentially ARC. Now, I saw a whole bunch of questions. Um, I love chicken nuggets. First off, I love your name on the screen. That's awesome. I love chicken nuggets. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan as well, but I try not to eat them because I know they're not good for us, especially the McDonald's ones. Um, said, you should bring back Bob Dunn on the show. He's a pleasure to watch. Bob is always a pleasure. He's he's an entertaining dude. Um, yes, I'll try to bring him back on. I'm going to be doing an event in the beginning of 
oh, what are we calling that? The beginning of June, I think, Online Training Academy is going to do an event that's going to have Bob Dunn and Bashir Chaya and uh, David Warner and myself. I'll be kind of the host of the thing, so that'll be kind of fun. But I'll try to get him back on the program first. Um, how can we see the ARC Holdings versus ARC ETS value? Okay, great. So, Tom, um, what I do... I'm a big fan of using bar chart, um, barchart.com. If you go there, you can type in the name of the ETF. So for example, I'll just, I'll do it for, from the very beginning. Um, let's go to your price overview so you guys can all see the process. So here's, I'll type in AARK, oops, sorry, AARKK. -K. So here's the ARK fund, right? And this is all the basic information on barchart.com. If you scroll down, you see a thing that says constituents. And they did a great job, not only because they give you all the components, but it also has a download link. So if you wanted to upload this into your trading platforms, a lot of platforms allow you to upload ticker symbol lists. So here is the list of all the components of uh, the ARC fund. And you can see, you know, there's some down here like um, PCAR, right? You're like, oh, it's part of the fund. Yeah, it's 0.01%. It's, it's a non-impacted one. This is not a major market mover. But these guys up here near the top, Right, Tesla 11%, Teladoc 6%, and you got Roku at almost five. Same with Square. You know these are the the more influential of the group. So um, I always love, especially with the ETFs. I love um, when you look at like things like these wind ETFs and solar ETFs. A lot of these companies you may have never heard of. You can just go look at all the components and then break down those one by one to make it much easier for the analysis process. Okay, what else do I got? Any other questions coming through for me? Um, how bad will inflation hurt Bitcoin? It hurt today. Should I just go into cash and play each day as it comes? Um, that's a tough one. Um, it's a real tough question there. Yeah, you know, the, I don't think inflation is going to do what you think it's going to do to Bitcoin. I think what it will do is actually going to rally the price of Bitcoin. Now, inflation is going to hurt the markets overall in a pretty big way. I think you're going to see this discussion become much more mainstream. I think I mentioned it last week. I talked on Friday's show about, you know, watch the inflation stuff here. That discussion is going to become much more of a forefront topic, even though Powell and Yellen and others are trying to push that conversation down. It was irrefutable that we're going to see CPI and PPI numbers spike with lumber and steel and all these other components of, of everyday life spiking up you know 100 percent 200 percent in the past six months so initially i think you'll see these equity markets take a big big drop and then what will happen is the fed and and um, the treasury is going to say oh, well we're going to do some things to help support the market again more stimulus but what that's going to do is that could potentially spike inflation even more and now all of a sudden what do they have to do they're going to have to raise rates to slow things down and the other way to control inflation would be to remove money supply from the economy well, how can you remove money supply when all of a sudden you're saying we want to put in you know, $6 trillion worth of stimulus for this development project and this and this and this, and all of a sudden prices go spiking up even more. So um, it's a very interesting way, uh, time ahead, say that. I think that if you do see inflation, I would actually go buy, I would actually go and buy Bitcoin. I, would, I think you'd be okay. Yes, I've heard of Riot Blockchain. Um, it's... It's not high on my list. Um, wait, real quick, let me go here. Lisa, when is that OT event? Um, there, we're, we're planning it right now, Lisa. It'll probably be in June. Uh, I'll definitely let you guys know more when that event comes out once the details are finalized, uh, if, if it ends up finalizing. Um, Brendan says, Merlin, inflation tanking equities is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Correct. Um, generally, that's what's going to take the markets anyway, but then you add in that inflation component when it's, like I say, it's irrefutable how quickly it's been rising, and everybody's saying, no, no, it's not a big deal. It's... Uh, It'll be an interesting time going forward to see how they posture around this and uh, try to make us feel warm and fuzzy about it. Um, you know, Riot Blockchain, that was another one. That was a question that a viewer sent in here. You know, as far as Riot Blockchain goes, look, it's one of the more popular internet or uh, crypto plays right now. And if you look at that price chart, not very good. I mean, we're up over 70 bucks. Now you're down at 26. To me, it's coming into a demand zone right around 20. But as far as, you know, what the company does, um, you know, I, I I feel like it's it's a decent play, but it's crypto mining, right? It's really a mining company. And I'm not a, I don't see the longevity of mining going decades down the road. I really see things changing here with regards to the way these systems function. And while a lot of them will still stay with proof of work, which requires a lot of mining, like Bitcoin and some other ones, a lot are going to switch to proof of stake, which will be less resource intensive, and that'll rule um, things like Riot Blockchain obsolete. Not obsolete, they'll just focus all the resources on the ones that are paying, but um, 
I'm I, I'm not that big on those types of, of companies personally. That's just me. Medic Mandown says Forex on Click. Uh, yes, they're actually they're it's in the process right now. We're working on Forex uh, in Click, getting all the different quoted pairs. But um, I don't know when the release date for that one is. You know, they keep adding on things step by step by step, small piece, small piece, small piece. Okay, uh, let me show you economic counter because I gotta get out of here today. I love my visual today. I thought this was a pretty good one. Arc sinking ship. Oh, that's a fun one. Um, here is the list. Hope you guys are still doing it. I I missed yesterday, so I need to make up for mine today. I'll be doing 200 right after the show. Um, and I, I didn't add in. I, I've got um, Pepe as well. It should be on this list. There's two other people I've been meaning to add to this list, but um, hopefully you guys are all sticking with your made challenges. Leslie, you still know those 100 push-ups? I'm, I'm impressed if you are, girl. Very, very, um, very, very impressed if you are. And uh, Walter, Pepper, I hope you guys are doing your trading homework. And for the rest of you, Sue, get out there and do some walking today. Here's what we've got cooking from the economic announcement for today. What I wanted you to notice was this number right here in red. That was the big one. We talked about it at the end of the show yesterday. We also talked about it on Friday. We also talked about it on Monday morning must knows. From there, um, it was a big jump up on both of these core and regular CPI. So we are feeling the pinch from those rising prices. No surprise for me anyway, and to many of you. Um, right now, the next focus is going to turn on to producer price index. If that number spikes even more, then this is going to start a pretty ugly cycle of rising prices very quickly, which will catch the attention of the Fed. And let's see, this is what we've got cooking for tomorrow. Really, it's the US. You've got unemployment claims, PPI as well. You can see right there, the expectation for PPI is 0.7%, dropping to 0.4. If today's news was any indication, to me, this is gonna be much higher than that uh, on the core and the regular PPI going from 1% to 0.3. My guess is you'll probably come out at over 1%. If it does, these markets are going to have another second ugly day to the downside. Yes, Brendan, I know CPI is fake. Uh, it's not that it's fake, it's manipulated, right? It's it's tweaked to fit the political party's agenda. Uh, we actually had someone who worked for the Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, and he specifically said it in those words that you know we tweak it to fit the political, political agenda. But you can only hide it for so long until you have to show inflation. Now the world's going to start to talk about it. All right. Let's see, um, where was that question? ISO Dude, uh, good to have you with us, ISO Dude, and welcome to OTA and this show. For those of you who are new, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. ISO Dude says, verdict on ARC, wait for lower to buy. Yes, my verdict on ARC is I would wait. Right now, I would believe it's that catching the falling knife type of attitude. You know, is there a spot at 90 where you know you might want to take a stab at it? Sure. Um, but given the way that this market is trending, given the way that this one's kind of falling from grace with increasing volume and watching outflows, I would be a much more cautious um, on ARC than, than, than normal. So I'd be careful with that one. Uh, yes, and you guys also, uh, I wrote it down here. You guys, I, I challenged you yesterday to, to find the scene from Baby. I can't believe there were four people who found it. And unfortunately, I only have two calendars and I, and I said that I would send it to the first two. So, um, and let's see if I can find the picture for you. It was really a stupid scene in the movie. I actually really enjoyed my part, but uh, see if I can bring it up for you guys just so you can laugh at me as I share this picture. Let me see real quick. Hold on. Let's see, baby, there it is. Um, and so that's the scene from the movie. Some of you found it right away, and that's um, um, Ashley Kumar, who's the big, you know, Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise of Bollywood film. But yeah, I was I basically playing a tourist, taking a bunch of pictures of the marketplace. So who... Who um, who who won? Uh, Tom was the first one to get it. Congrats, Tom. He got it right away. Like, I don't know how you got it so quickly. And the number two was Simon. Simon, uh, and I did by timestamp, guys. We also had Siraj got it and Ken got it as well. So sorry for Siraj and Ken. I'll come up with another one. But uh, I like the little competition we had. I was surprised to see so quickly people responding. So Tom and Simon, if you want me to mail it to you, um, you're going to have to email me. Email me at tradermerlin at gmail.com. And, um, oh, you actually did. Um, never mind. I already have your emails because you sent me the response. What am I talking about? I will send you an email uh, asking where you want this thing sent to. <laughs> I will not be winning any Oscars. <laughs> you were in two scenes? Um, was I? Uh-oh. I didn't know the second one. I, this is the only one that I saw where I'm at. Lisa, I would not call me being famous uh, famous for that. But uh, it, was, it was entertaining being there. And I'll tell you what. What's really interesting about uh, this specific scene here is... It's in one of the more famous temple areas um, of, of Nepal. It's a beautiful temple. And I guess like six months or a year after I bought it, um, it, I saw I bought it. I, I read your chat at the same time and it totally screws in my head. 
about six months or a year after I went and we filmed this, um, I, we were just there for fun and it just ended up being in the movie, the earthquake hit. You guys might remember, it leveled the, all those temples that we were at. They were just completely leveled. And I was like, oh man, side part of history gone. Um, Merlin, did you see the launch of ICP on Coinbase? I did. I haven't dug enough into the protocol. I know Brendan here is with us today is, is all over it. Um, I was just looking at the, the price trajectory of ICP, and, and it, of course it's very similar to almost every other cryptocurrency right now, but until I dig deeper into the protocol itself and, and its utility aspects, I will probably shy away from it. Here is Coinbase, and let me go down and show you ICP. And just, just to show you, this is today, uh, sorry, this is all time. So had these huge spikes. No, this is just today. I don't know why this is showing me that. Let's go year to date. Oh, this is only going to show you since they've owned it, since they brought it to market. So, um, I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of it yet, just because of the price chart. I mean, look, it was a pretty ugly day for it today, down uh, 29 percent. But um, I'm, I'll give any cryptocurrency the time of day by looking at it and analyzing the project and seeing if it's worth it to to put into one of those four slices we talked about into my portfolio. Um, yeah, I might. I have cash right now, as I told you guys. I sold out of. Um, I sold out of my Ethereum and my Litecoin, and my bottom line is I want to buy back in Ethereum in a big way. I'm just kind of waiting for a pullback on it, but we shall see. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me for today. Uh, our guest for tomorrow, I got to make sure he's going to be on. He's, he's always really busy. I'll have to remind him today. Uh, it'll be Trey Lazaro. So tomorrow will be a futures topic. Again, if you like today's show with Colin Tedders, you can visit him at the Investor Channel on YouTube. Uh, if you like today's show specifically, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button or subscribe if you are new to the program. And of course, if you have comments, questions, feedback, whether it's good or it's bad. For example, Gregory Wright, who says I'm probably the most boring person as far as analysis on financial markets or something like that earlier. Email me, let me know exactly what you're talking about, and we'll see if we can make ourselves even better on the program. So, hope you guys did well today. Hope the markets uh, didn't hurt you too bad, and hope the cryptocurrencies will do even better tomorrow. That's going to do it for me. I'll see you guys tomorrow with Trey Lazera on the Trader Merlin Show. Take care, everybody. See you tomorrow.